Hi friends, my name is Sam. I'm the founder of the Color Palette Studio and welcome to my very first YouTube video. I'm really excited. This is something I've wanted to do for a while. I'm very passionate about color palette education. And so I thought it would be fun to do these like short-ish videos where I get to dive deeper into different color palette terms, techniques, tutorials, so that you feel more comfortable using color palettes for brands. Um, today we're gonna do a really fun little video, which is an introduction to color palettes. So if you're new to this world or you want a quick, a quick refresher, this is gonna be the video for you. I'm Sam, I'm a graphic designer and color palette expert based in Nashville, Tennessee. I create tools and resources to help brands create perfect color palettes. So I really live in that zone between uh, color palettes and business strategy. That's like where I like to live. Now I have a unique color palette strategy that has three components to it. The first is psychology. So this is how your colors influence emotions, perceptions, and behaviors. So when you're building a color palette, how do you want your customers to feel or to act? This is really important. Like uh, if you use a very bold red, that could encourage someone to act. Or if you use a series of colors together, um, like if you use a light green, a light blue, and a dusty jade green, that could make someone feel or act a different way. Um, we are gonna talk about in another video the difference between color psychology and color palette psychology, but both are really important when we're building palettes. Psychological influences are not to be ignored. The next thing I like to focus on in my strategy is business strategy. So this is how your colors actually align with your business's vision and connect with your target audience. So is your brand trying to attract millennial parents or are they trying to attract construction workers? It's really important to think about how your colors will align with your target clients. And then finally, graphic design. And this is where I think a lot of people start, but this is just one of the components that I focus on. Graphic design means how your colors follow design principles of harmony, accessibility, and balance. So like how they actually look from a design perspective. So what even is a color palette? A brand color palette is a predetermined series of colors that you consistently use across your marketing. So think uh, the colors that you use on your website, on social media, on any print materials that you use, any signage in your store or in your location, or if you're, whole, uh, if you're doing like a pop-up booth, what color tablecloth would you use? All of these things are part of your color palette. And the most important part of a color palette is that it is a predetermined series of colors, meaning you choose your colors once and then you do your very best not to stray from those colors. Now, one of the most common questions I get is how many colors should you have in your palette? Typically, you'll assign five to eight colors to your brand color palette, but I really encourage you not to get too hung up on that number. Five colors is on the lowest end of the number of colors I re uh, recommend having. You can have more than eight. Um, most of my palettes have about 10 colors in them, but my own personal palette has like 20 some. So, you know, feel it out, do what needs to be done for you. Just know that it's a predetermined series. So it doesn't really matter how many colors are in that series. You just have to stick to that series. Now, it's very important to recognize that your brand is never, ever, ever just one color. If I only used one color on my branding, this is what my website would look like, this blue box over here. This is what it would look like if I just used one color in my branding, which obviously I don't. Your brand is the result of how your brand colors complement and interact with each other. So here is a small snippet of my actual color palette and you can see how they look on my actual website. So we've got background colors, we've got text colors, we've got accent colors, button colors. All of these things are so important. And I also really like to call out here that uh, having all of these colors in your palette does not mean that you are going to use them at the same rate or frequency. So if you'll notice, like I've got this green in my palette here, I never use that as a background color, I never use it as a text color, it's really just an accent color that I like to have. So your colors in your palette don't all need to be like at the same volume in your branding. They can be accent colors, they can just be ones that you use on reserve. Um, so don't feel the pressure to use them all because you don't have to. So I think it's really important that we talk about what makes something a successful color palette. The first thing that I think makes it a successful color palette is that it's consistent with your brand identity. So the colors that you choose should align with your brand's personality, your values, and your ethos. So the easiest way to describe this is the colors that you choose should feel like the brand that they represent. That's the most important. 
Next, you wanna focus on differentiation. This means that your color palette sets the brand apart from its competitors. Now, this can mean a few different things. I really want you to think about how your brand looks next to your competitors. And the easiest way to describe this is if you're looking at your website and your competitor's website side by side, even if you removed the logos and the text, you should be able to tell which brand is which just based on the colors. So that's what you're looking for. You wanna be able to stand apart from your competition and be recognizable in your own way. Now there is something that I like to call out here, which is that you're allowed to share colors with your competitors. The way you use your palette should be different, but like if you use lime green and your competitor also uses lime green, that's okay. You're not like forbidden to use lime green because someone else uses it, you just need to use lime green in a totally different way. Next, you wanna focus on emotional resonance. This means that you should evoke the desired emotional response from your audience. So this is going back to that color psychology or color palette psychology. Your color palette should make them feel a certain way. So like, look at my palette over here. This is uh, my full color palette. I want people to feel creative and excited and welcome and full of color. Like I want people to feel like they have a rainbow of possibilities when they look at my branding. So that's why I have all of these colors. You are going to want to focus on how your colors will make someone feel. Do you want them to feel safe? Do you want them to feel tranquil? Do you want them to feel motivated? Do you want them to feel scared? Do you want them to feel hungry? Like all of those things you can achieve with the right colors. And finally, you wanna take into account accessibility. This means that you have sufficient contrast between your text colors and your background colors. And this is something that I am extremely passionate about. Now let's talk about how to test for accessibility. When we talk about accessibility, what we're really talking about is contrast. That means that there is a difference between the background color and the text color. So look at these two options here. On the top, you've got option one. It says, can you read this? And on the bottom, it says the same thing. Um, but can you tell the difference between these two? Is one of them a little bit easier to read? Most likely you're finding the bottom one option two a lot easier to read. And that's because there is much, much, much higher color contrast here. On the top option, we've got a light pink background with like a soft pink text. On the bottom, we have the same background color, but a brown text. Because brown is so much darker and deeper and different than the background color, it's just easier to read. This is really important for accessibility purposes. It's really important to keep your palettes accessible because not everyone sees color the same way. So some folks uh, have color vision deficiencies and so they can't see the differences in tones or colors as easily. It's also important because if your contrast is low, your designs just don't look as good. They're not easy to read and they don't look good. So I'm gonna show you actually how to test for color palette contrast. Um, I have a tool called the Color Palette Tester and it's really fun to use. So what we're gonna do is actually test a color palette. Now, if you wanna know more about um, the rules of compliance, I list them here within the tool. Essentially what we're looking for is a contrast level of 4.5 to one. That's what we're looking for for most of our text. So we are gonna plug in any random colors. Um, I'm gonna click on a color and I can use this eyedropper tool. So I'm just gonna grab a random color from my screen and we can grab colors from anywhere. So let's just like build a random little palette. We're just gonna throw some fun colors on here and see what happens. Um, okay, so like, this group of colors here, it's cute, right? Like these are awesome colors. They look nice together. They're warm, they're soft, they're cozy. Um, I'm gonna increase the size so it's easier for you to read. I'm gonna click show colors. And now we get to view all of the background colors and all the text colors together. And what we're looking over here for is the contrast levels. We're looking for a check mark, meaning that these contrast levels are above a 4.5. None of these pairings are above a 4.5, which means that this actually is not a very usable brand palette because there's not enough difference in color contrast. Now that just means that we have to add another color. We wanna go for something darker because all of these colors here are very, very light and similar. So what we wanna do is choose something different. So we wanna add something dark. I think that brown should do it. So now that I've added a brown, I'm gonna click show colors and suddenly look at all these check marks we have. Now we've got some color palette contrast. And if I click show compliant colors, 
we can actually view all the color pairings that have a contrast level of 4.5 or higher. Um, this is really important because you wanna make sure that your palette is usable. So you don't have to use every single color and you don't have to use them in the same way, like I said. So like if I never wanna have brown as a background color, that's fine, but I do need brown to be a text color. I do need something dark enough to sit on a different color background. Now I am very curious, what brands come to mind when you think of a successful color palette? In the comments, can you type what brands come to mind here? I'm always really excited to dive deeper into color palettes that folks love. I'm gonna show you a couple that I think are really great. The first is Burger King. Burger King has a pretty iconic color palette. They just rebranded recently, but you can see their palette over here. It's definitely got some like nostalgic, retro, cozy, comfortable vibes to it. Um, they've got a nice spread of light and dark colors. And what I think is so interesting about Burger King's color palette is they have a red and a yellow. Now, can you think of any other competitors to Burger King that have a red and a yellow in their color palette? If you're in the States, you're probably thinking of McDonald's because they use red and yellow and they are absolutely a direct competitor to Burger King. But Burger King is still like allowed to use those colors. They just use them in a totally different way. They don't use those red and yellow together in their logo. They use them in different ways on their marketing materials. So this is a great example of having similar or the same color or colors as a competitor, but doing it in your own fresh way. It's you're allowed to do it. So to wrap up this video, when you're building your color palettes, make sure that they are consistent with your brand's identity, that they have differentiation from your competitors, that they elicit an emotional response from your customers, and accessible, meaning they have high contrast pairings. And if you need some help testing your color palettes for contrast, I created the Color Palette Tester, which is an all-in-one tool that helps you test your color palettes for contrast really, really easily, all in one click. I hope that you like this video and that you feel more comfortable working with color palettes. And if you have any topics that you want me to dive a little bit deeper into, please comment. I would love to know what you wanna learn more about.